Alrighty, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'm going to direct my question at my uh, fellow Illinois and Dr. Hawley. Um, as, as you know, uh, it's not just Illinois, uh, but you know, all states throughout the country are, are facing this this terrible problem with uh, child care providers uh, because of COVID-19. Um, Governor Pritzker was kind enough to come to my congressional district last year and, and stop at a place called Skip Along. Um, you're, you're probably familiar with it. I, I'm a big fan of Skip Along and all they do to help our community. Um, so it is it is one of the larger child care providers in the Quad Cities, which is where I live. And I know you're familiar with it. But just to share a, a, a couple stats, they went from serving a thousand children prior to COVID-19 to 50 back in March. Um, now, obviously, uh, they, and thankfully, they've moved closer to full capacity. Um, but providers like Skip Along won't be able to be fully back to normal, really, until the vaccines are widely administered. Um, so, you know, this, this impact has just been so tough for child care providers wondering if they're going to be able to keep their doors open, for parents wondering how they juggle their careers and their families, and, and just all of the, the challenges with that. Um, so I'm, I'm, let, me, let me go on record saying I am proud of the Pritzker administration. I am proud of you and how you've been able to use state and federal dollars to take this issue on directly. And I, that's why you were invited here today to share your successes. I want to ask you specifically how the Illinois Child Care Restoration Grant is helping providers and families in Illinois. And just to drill down a little bit deeper on that, what do you see coming up next for the Child Care Restoration Grants? To, in order to meet the needs of the providers and our families? And how are you looking to improve that program? Let's start with that, if we could, please. Well, thanks so much. And I want to say that it, it, in all the conversation here today, our challenge with the childcare industry right now is probably less one of that there isn't enough childcare out there right now for families who are going back to work. The challenge is the childcare providers that are out there right now are not getting enough revenue. They are under enrolled. They are dramatically under enrolled. And that has to do with families who are working at home and, and is sort of unnatural, like we all are right now, um, and maybe are having their kids there home with them. There's lots of families are not choosing to put their kids in childcare right now. But when we're able to open up our society and, and go back, everyone go back to work in their sort of more normal settings, people are going to need to have somewhere to go. And if their child care centers have been financially ravaged by a lack of revenue for a, a period of a year or more, they're not going to be there for families to be able to use. So you asked what's sort of next with the, the child care restoration grants. We need to keep it going. We used all the resources we could and, and really help support providers, but they still need that help. And we have kind of calculated out that, that the money that we received in the last relief package won't even get us to the end of six months in terms of providing the relief that providers need in order to be able to keep their staff on board. The staff that they've worked so long to build, you know, Skip Along is a, is a great example of a place that invests in their staff, helps them complete college degrees, helps them get the qualifications they need. We can't afford to have them leave our childcare workforce. We need to keep them engaged in there. And so we are planning to continue to invest in the, the restoration grant model providing direct relief to providers. Um, something we haven't been able to do as much as investing in the childcare workforce more, and we wanna be able to do that with the, the funding, um, as well as some of our license exempt providers that we haven't been able to provide the necessary relief to, and we're looking at that, um, how we can support them. So that's, we. if you send the states the money, we will find ways to use it well to support this industry that so critically needs it. I would just say to my colleagues on at this uh, hearing today that what Dr. Hawley is doing and what the Pritzker administration are doing really can be a model. And again, Chairman, uh, Chairwoman DeLauro, I know that's why you invited uh, Dr. Hawley to be with us today, but I do want to point that out if you're looking for a good model. Um, uh, since I've got 40 seconds, I'm going to I'm going to follow up with one other question, Dr. Hawley. Um, so I, I, an interesting data point that we've seen coming out of Illinois is that parents with the youngest children. So the children under uh, age one aren't returning to, to child care and wondering what you think is going on with that and what we can do to address it. So I think the, the operative word there is returning to child care. I think the older children 
they were in childcare and their families were, were comfortable with it. And when you think about going back, that's to a familiar place and they're able to, um, even if there's a little nervousness about COVID and all of that, it's a familiar place and they have that trust. If you just had a baby and in this sort of strange time that we're living in, it's a little more nerve wracking to bring your child into care right now. We know that we're gonna to have to invest in outreach to parents to help them understand that it is safe for them to use these services, use our preschool services, even early education is, um, is way down. So we need to be able to invest in reaching out to families and doing that kind of parent engagement. Very good, thank you, Dr. Holly. Uh, Chairwoman Delora, I yield back. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, 